Your homework is to memorize this and write it 15 times. Welcome to the coolest, dippest half hour of fun on TV. This is Brain Stew with Jennifer Pulley. Hey, is Brain Stew a mixture or a solution? Here's what we're mixing up this week. We head over to NASA and meet a polymer chemist. Huh? Well, she's gonna show us in her lab how to test mixtures and solutions. Do you have a sweet tooth? I do, because we're going to a dairy farm to find out how ice cream is made. Oh yeah, is ice cream a mixture, a solution, or both? Stick around, and hey, keep your hands off that remote, because we've got much more ahead on Brain Stew, next. Hi, I'm Jennifer Pulley, and welcome to Brain Stew, and the Brain Stew Kitchen. As some of you know, or those of you that don't, I'm a teacher. Terrific, excellent, <laughs> amazing. <laughs> anyway, I'm a teacher, and um, I'm a science teacher, as a matter of fact, I teach science. When we're talking about science, we do talk about matter. And matter is anything that takes up space. Hopefully you do know the three states of matter. Solid, like this glass. Gas, like this steam water vapor. And liquid, like this very hot water I'm pouring out. There you have it, your three states of matter. Now, did you know we can take those three states of matter and divide them, excuse me while I make some herbal tea. We can divide the three states of matter into two groups, mixtures and solutions. Take salad dressing. Most salad dressing is made of oil and vinegar, two liquids that are placed together but can be easily separated. If you let the salad dressing sit for a while, what happens? Well, take a look. The oil and vinegar separate. The oil is lighter, so it goes to the top. The vinegar is heavier, so it stays on the bottom. This is a great example of a mixture. These are two liquids that don't mix well together. That's why when you have salad, you have to shake it up before you pour it on your salad. You don't just want all oil on your salad, you want to mix it up. So they mix up for a little while, but then let them sit, and guess what'll happen? That oil will go right back up to the top. Go check your own refrigerator. You'll see what I mean. Uh, get off the set, we're trying to tape here. Shoot. Here's another mixture for you. What about your breakfast cereal? With some fruit. Here you go, oatmeal with fruit. Yummy. This is a mixture, because the fruit can be easily separated from the cereal. You just pull out the fruit if you don't want it. No problem, easily separated. Now let's talk about solutions. A solution is a mixture in which one substance spreads evenly throughout another. Here's an example of a solution. Take some water and powdered drink mix, Kool-Aid, Weilers, whatever you got. Now, when you mix the powdered drink mix with the water, you have a mixture, right? two substances that are mixed together. But this is a solution. Let me show you why. Watch what happens. Because the powder dissolved or spreads evenly throughout, this mixture is also a solution. There's really no way that we could separate the powder from the water. Well, unless we had a lab or special equipment, which I don't have in my kitchen. So, the only thing we can really do with this solution is drink it and enjoy it. Man, I can't get this permanent cherry grin off my face. This stuff is permanent. So, do you get it? All solutions are mixtures, but not all mixtures are solutions. Here's my point. My fruit did not dissolve into my cereal like the cherry mix did in the water. Solution and mixture, just a mixture, not a solution. Now this is your last chance. I hope you've been paying attention. I sound just like a teacher, don't I? Remember, mixtures can be easily separated. 
well, without a laboratory or special equipment. And solutions are hard to separate because one substance is dissolved into another. My tea! Solution! Hope you knew that. Let's go meet a friend of mine. She's a doctor. Well, I'm not the kind you go to when you're sick. Oh, sorry. I'm here with Dr. McDaniel. Now, doctor, can I call you Trish? Sure. Okay. <laughs> um, you are a doctor of? Uh, I'm a polymer chemist here, and we're here at NASA Langley Research Center. And this is a synthesis lab that we're standing in. This is your lab, right? Yes. Oh, yes. Great. great. So this is where I spend my days. Okay, and I see we've got these nifty little glasses here. That's right. Whenever you're in a synthesis lab, we have some certain safety concerns. And number one is our eyes. Okay. So we always wear safety glasses. These are cool. I like the colors. Oh yeah, we had pretty heavy. <laughs> and another thing that we do is whenever we're working with things, we like to wear lab coats. Yep. And gloves. Oh, great. Do you have some of those for me? Yes. Okay, we're great. Put on gloves as we do our different experiments. So okay. I Okay. Now you know we've been idea. Oh, thank you. You know sure. we've been talking about um, mixtures and solutions on the show. That's right. And um, and you know, you just were the perfect person to um, give us some demonstrations of some mixtures and solutions. What, what you got? Okay, let's start off and do a mixture. What's a mixture? Mixtures are things that we can separate easily. Yeah. Now I've done some mixtures at home with like fruit salad and things like that. Now what kind of mixture can you do here in the lab? Um, let's do a mixture of, the first one we're going to do is a real easy one to separate. So let's do a mixture of some charcoal and water. Okay, so. Let's start out. You want to get me some water? Water, sure. Using a beaker here, no graduated right. cylinder. What it's, is a, it's a beaker. It's That's a beaker. A beaker. So we're going to start out okay. and do a mixture. And this black stuff is. This is activated charcoal. We use it to take the color out of things. It's the same thing you use it on your fish tanks. Oh, okay. For filters and the fish okay, tanks. but not charcoal like for a grill. No. Okay, okay. One of the things that we know about mixtures is if we let them sit long enough, they will settle out. Yeah. And if we let this sit long enough, it will settle out. Now we're going to cheat a little bit and go a little faster and we're going to filter it. And that's another definition of a, a mixture. All right. It's something so that we can filter. We can do this in the lab, not at home. That's right. All right. And what we're going to do here is we put a piece of filter paper. I've put a couple of pieces of filter paper inside of our filter. All right. Now you're hooking up a tube to it? Right, and this is our aspirator. And an aspirator just pulls a suction on it. And let's filter our solution. Do you want to do this? Um, sure. Okay. All right. Right in the middle, doctor? Yeah. You can just fill it up, pour it on in here. You're telling me that we're going to have clear in the bottom and black on the top. That's, That's what you're right. telling I don't know. That looked pretty mixed up to me. I don't know. We'll have to see what happens. Well, now if you look through in the bottom, you see that we've got the clear water has come through. That's the water that I got from the spigot. That's right. So now this mixture is very easy to separate. And that's one of the definitions that we use for mixtures. And then we'll have the charcoal left in the filter then that's if all right. goes well. That's right. And now if we take our filter off, that's great. <gasps> you see that dry. we left with our charcoal. You want to grab that? Yeah. That's amazing. It looks just like the stuff you got right out of the bottle. That's right. That is great. And it's dry. And it's nice that you had mentioned how things look. And oftentimes we think that when things look the same, that they are the same. And I'd like to do an example. We have something that looks the same, but it really isn't the same. Ooh. Okay? Ooh, interesting. I love how that aspirator worked. That was great. It totally separated that mixture. That's right. That's charcoal That's and water. Right. That's great. Okay, what else do you have for me? Okay, now we're going to make another mixture. And I guess the main difference in this, now we're using what we call sea light. It's basically a sand. But when we mix it up, now it makes a white solution. And once you mix that up, all right, mixture here. That's a mixture because it's sand not it's not water. completely dissolving then. That's that, right. Is that right? It's, and see, it you, looks like it is. If you look at that, it kind of reminds us and looks a lot like milk. And if you think if you yeah. put it in, we've got two white solutions here. Yeah. All right. Now let's look at the difference and what happens when we filter these, and we'll decide if it really is a solution or mixture. So we'll see. We don't know. Mixture, solution. Well, we know it's a mixture, right? But we don't know if it's a solution. That's right. If it dissolved, it would be a solution. If it didn't, it's a mixture. Let's see what happens. Now, Jennifer, what do you think this time? Solution or mixture? I'm going to have to say mixture. It didn't dissolve completely. That's right. Easily separated with the aspirator. Yeah. Now let's try our other other one. Let's okay. The milk, right? The milk. All right. Looks exactly the same as the other one. That's see right. See if the results are exactly the same. I don't know. What do you think? Is it all coming straight through? That's right. There's not going to be anything left on the filter. That's right. Hmm. And this time, even though it was white like our mixture of sand and water and milk, we think of milk as a solution. Because everything's dissolved into That's it and there's right. nothing left on the paper. Wow. 
Oh, wow. That definitely shows me the difference between a mixture and a solution right That's there. That's right. Now let's take our piece of filter paper off and we see there's nothing there. Oh, just like it was before. So you can't separate the milk? No, that's not true. There are ways to separate milk, but it's not something you can do easily. Okay. It's things that we can do here in the lab. Ah, not at home. That's right. Okay. Hey, Trish, this is kind of an odd thing to find in the lab. It looks like a piece of chalk. Well, it looks like a piece <laughs> of chalk, but actually what this is is a magnetic stir bar. And we use stir bars in our beakers and our flasks to keep things from bubbling over. It keeps things so well you just mixed. stir them like that? Or? Well, no. If you look at this one, it's stirring here. There's a magnet in the bottom. Okay. And this has a magnet inside of it. So it's just two magnets turning, oh. and, it, and it's a way of mixing things. And that's just a smaller stir bar than that one. That's right. Well, good. I didn't know what you had chalk in the lab for you. No, no chalk for it. <laughs> okay. You're the teacher. That's right. <laughs> okay, now, what you're going to show us is um, a solution that we're going to separate. Is that correct? That's right. And it's called distillation. That's right. Okay, and, and that's what this is. Right. Okay. We've set up a distillation apparatus. This is a simple one in that... We're going to put our, our solutions in the bottom. Okay. Right here we have a condenser. Okay. Which means as it boils, it bubbles, it's going to go up in here, but there's cold water running through it. Okay. So we'll see it condense and drop back down inside. We're going to make a solution of alcohol. Okay. And some water. Why is it purple? Because it's my favorite color. Okay. That's why you got the purple glasses. Yeah. <laughs> so now we see that we have a solution. And if I filtered this, it would filter through, yes or no? Yes, it should. Right. So it would completely go through and there'd be nothing left. That's so right. So that's why it's solution, but now you're going to separate it. Right. right. We're going to show a way of separating these kind of solutions. So you just poured it into the dish. Poured, poured it in through a funnel. I'm going to take the funnel out and put a stop around there so it doesn't bubble out that end. Okay. And this down here is? A heating mantle. I'm just putting this up. So this gets hot then? Right. Trish, what's happening? Okay, now we're starting to boil, and you can see that the alcohol is starting to drip down. This is actually what we call refluxing. We've got the boiling water and alcohol, and the alcohol is actually starting to go up our condenser. Because the condenser has cold water in it, it condenses back and drops back into our, our flask. Oh, wow. So that's what's dripping back down is that's the alcohol. That's right. That's right. Trish, is this distillation working here? That's right. Now you'll see that the clear coming over is the alcohol. Oh. It's distilling off. It's collecting the alcohol here, just alcohol, right? That's right, and we're left with our purple water. So that's pure ethanol. That's right. Trish, thank you so much. We really appreciate this. Well, I really enjoyed having Brain Stew here in the lab to talk about mixed juice and solutions. So can we come back whenever we need to come back? Oh, come back anytime. Anytime we need to do some experiments. That's things. right. Okay, great. Thanks a lot. Okay. I want to thank Dr. McDaniel. She did some awesome mixture and solution experiments. Anyway, guess what? We're off next to Bergie's Dairy, okay? We got the cows coming home. We're going over there to see what they have in mixtures or solutions. in Chesapeake, Virginia at Bergie's Farm with Leonard Bergie. You own this place? Yeah. Hi, oh, Jennifer. How are you doing? I'm great. I'm doing Good. great. Brain Stew, it's so excited to be here and find out all the things you do here. Um, now, you have a bunch of cows. This is your dairy farm. How That's long right. have you been here? Oh, wow. Well, my family's been here about 60 years. Actually, my grandfather started out back in the early 30s. Wow. With just a few cows, and uh, it's slowly grown now, and uh, we're milking about 110 cows now, twice every day. Okay, so you're getting milk every day. And that's right. Right, and you get my favorite, you get ice cream every day, that's right? That's right. Okay. Everybody loves ice cream. That's right, and that's what we're talking about. I mean, you know, we're talking about mixtures and solutions. I don't want to get off into what my favorite foods are or anything. But um, we're talking about mixtures and solutions. Can you explain to me kind of the process of making ice cream? I mean, from the cow to the finished product. We milk cows twice a day, and uh, we get the milk, and we actually have to separate it. We separate the skim from the cream, and then we use that cream in making the ice cream mix. So at that point, then, when we separate it, milk at that point is, is a mixture. That's right. Just what he said, exactly. <laughs> he knows. Um, so, so it's a mixture because it's easily separated. I guess That's it's right. like oil and vinegar. The cream will That's fall right. to the bottom, is that right? Or the no, cream the cream comes? actually rises to the top. Cream is lighter, so it rises to the top naturally. Okay, so you got the cream on the top and, and all the, the fat. Skim, and the... That's right, the skim on the bottom. Okay, and that separates, and That's then right. what? It naturally separates that way, but we have to run it through a separator, uh, a stainless steel machine that will separate it quickly. 
How does that work? Centrifugal force actually spins it out so that the cream comes out an upper pipe and then the skim milk comes out of a lower pipe. Well, that's easy. And, uh, so then we take that milk and cream. And we actually add sugar. milk powder and a little bit of stabilizer and we blend and mix those together to make the ice cream mix. Okay, so when the sugar goes in, I guess it's dissolving into That's it, right. so it's becoming more of a solution now. That's correct. Right. Then we, uh, we pasteurize that. What does pasteurize mean? That means we heat it up to kill the bad germs. It has to be heated up at 160 degrees and held for 30 minutes. To kill all the bad That's germs. That's right. Okay. And then we uh, homogenize it. Huh? That blends it again. In fact, that makes it even more a solution. Exactly, uh, because it's breaking up things even more. It's making right. it more and more difficult to separate at that that's point. That's right. Very difficult. In fact, it cannot be separated. Homogenization, it's, um, a, it's pressurized. Is that correct? That's right. 2,000 okay. pounds of pressure. The milk or the mixture is forced through a small valve at 2,000 pounds of pressure, and that breaks it up very small so it, it's There's no well, way it's going to be separated. That's correct. And then it goes down through a pipe and up into this big container tank. and what does that tank do? It's cooled down again down to 40 degrees. From 160 to 40. Boom. Yeah, that's correct. Boom. Wow. And it's chilled and then stored at 40 until we're ready to freeze it. And that's actually where we whip the air in and also add the fruits and flavors, nuts, whatever goes in. Chocolate. Chocolate. Strawberry. Oh dear. Well, let's get let's <laughs> let's get side here. Triple chocolate. Oh, well, no. Oh, yeah. <laughs> when it's frozen, it comes out as a soft serve, yeah. sort of which is about uh, 10 to 20 degrees, 18, okay. somewhere around above 20 zero. above zero. Okay. And then it's actually put in a hardening cabinet, which is a very cold freezer, blast freezer, like 30 below. And that freezes it very hard overnight. But it doesn't have to be that cold to store. So we then bring it out, put it in another unit, and it's actually stored in a freezer at about 10 below to zero. Wow. And then at that point, it's got all the nuts. It's got everything right. in everything it. That's right. Everything is in it. And it's all ready to go. It's and all ready to go. Serve it ready and to eat, eat it. OK. <laughs> How do you yeah. milk your cows? Well, we milk them by machines. Yeah, we actually can bring in eight cows at a time, and we milk them with machines. It takes about maybe two and a half to three hours to milk them all. But we have to milk them twice a day. So five uh, five to six hours a day, someone's milking the cows. And you're getting about five gallons a cow. That's right. About. And then what happens to the milk? Like, is it in a pail? You know, I always think of this in a farm, you know, somebody's milking, you know. <laughs> so, well, where, you know, these machines hook on to the udders. That's right? right. And then where does the milk go? Yeah, well, these days it goes through a stainless steel pipe. Okay. It's all stainless steel or glass, easily cleaned. So it goes through a stainless steel pipe into a tank. It's held in that tank, and then we'll actually pump it over into the vat. And then the vat is where we'll mix in the other ingredients to make the ice cream. A lot of tanks and pumping and That's vats right. and, you know, cream, all, all that <laughs> stuff all around here. Okay, Leonard, all this talk about all this ice cream and everything is, is great, you know, but I want to see the finished product here. Mm, I'm getting hungry, it. too. Me, too. You want to go get some? Yeah, let's do it. All right, it sounds good. Okay, Leonard, this is it. Well, what kind would you like? Uh, I'm going to try the toffee crunch. That sounds good. Hmm, that does sound good. I think I'll take pumpkin. Kids, you have got to get your parents to drive you out here to try this. This is the best ice cream I've ever had. It's wonderful. I mean, it came right from those cows out there. This is so great. Leonard, this is awesome. Oh, great. Glad oh, you like it. it's wonderful. Now, listen, let, let me just straighten some one thing out here because I was a little confused and I don't want them to be confused. When milk comes home and you buy it in the grocery store, you get it delivered, however you get your milk, it won't separate easily. The cream doesn't rise to the top. That's right. Why is that again? Because it's already been pasteurized and homogenized. Okay, I just wanted to make that make make sure. So when it comes right out of a cow, that's when it's easily separated. That's so that's right. when it's a mixture. By the time it gets home to the kids and they're pouring in their cereal, the milk is now a solution at that point, right? That's right. Okay, I got it. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much for, for your time. I know you're a busy man. I'm dripping all over myself <laughs> here. Um, I want to thank you for your time and letting us come out here and brain stew, getting to see a little bit behind the scenes of Bergie's Dairy Farm. Cool, thanks, thanks for coming. Lot. Thanks a lot. Up Enjoy next, it. you guys, you don't want to leave. We're not even leaving Chesapeake. We've also got a really cool experiment that you got to see. This is dripping all over. Bye.
Here's what happens when you try to dissolve food coloring in oil. Here's what you'll need. Liquid cooking oil and water. A glass or plastic container and blue food coloring. Here's the procedure. Pour about a cup of water into your container. Slowly pour the same amount of... <laughs> Slowly pour the same amount of oil into the container. Observe what happened. Add five drops of food coloring into your mixture. One, two, three, four, five. You could get a little messy. Observe the floating balls of color. As gravity takes over, some of the colored balls sink. If you look underneath, you can still see some of the balls floating in the oil. If you have any balls that don't sink, here's what you do. You take a pencil and you push the ball, still floating in the oil, all the way down to the water. As soon as the color balls touch the water, they immediately bulk apart and dissolve. Here are the results. Two separate layers form. The oil floats on top of the water because it is lighter. Why? Oil and water are immiscible. That means they do not mix and will separate into layers. Food coloring does not dissolve in oil and will float if the drops are small enough. The oil surrounding the balls of color prevent them from touching the water. Pushing the balls through the oil allows them to touch and dissolve in the water. So what is it, a mixture or a solution, or both? I want to thank Martha, Ann, and Margaret at the Central Library in Chesapeake. Those librarians sure know their mixtures and solutions. Think they can figure out what this is? Okay, one more time, class. What are we studying today? That's it, mixtures and solutions. So next time you're out, look around. Look at all matter. What is it, a mixture, a solution, or both? Well, that's our science lesson for this week. I hope your brain is stewing with information about mixtures and solutions. Next week, we're, I'm not gonna tell you where we're gonna be. If you wanna find out, you tune in. See you then. So what is it, what is it, sorry. <laughs> so this is it. And I wanna thank Dr. McDaniel. That was, that was such awesome experiments. Now, a mixture is two or more substances that can be placed together 